matchup in the Mountain West Conference between the Bulldogs of Fresno State and the Aztecs of San Diego State. Fresno State is still undefeated atop the Mountain West Conference West Division. San Diego State undefeated no more. With Ginny Dell on the sideline, Aaron Taylor, I'm Carter Blackburn. San Diego State suffered its first loss of the season last Saturday versus Boise State. Wasn't so much that the Aztecs lost that game, it was the manner in which they lost it. They got pushed around. As physically defeated at the point of attack as I've ever seen a rocky long offense. But every goal that San Diego State had coming into 2017 is still very much on the table. But they're going to have to go through a very good Fresno State Bulldog team to do it. They will need a bounce back effort tonight from the entire team. But that begins with Rashad Penny. Rashad Penny who was held to 53 rushing yards last week by Boise State. So for the 57th time the Aztecs of San Diego State and the Bulldogs of Fresno State San Diego State won the toss and will receive and Penny gets his hands on the football first he will bring it out deep in the end zone Rashad Penny is dropped at the seven yard line so Rashad Penny decides to bring it out and he's dropped inside the 10. As we look at our Chick-fil-A starting lineups, Christian Chapman, the junior from Carlsbad, California, has still thrown only one interception on the year. But a costly decision last week. That was a backwards pass. Return for a touchdown. One of the two non-offensive touchdowns Boise State got to get things rolling. Very uncharacteristic for Chapman, who takes good care of the football. He was sacked five times by Boise State. So the big question for the Aztecs, beginning with the offensive line, can they run the football against the Bulldogs? Going to send Penny into the slot with Nick Bauden in the backfield on first and ten. And Chapman back to pass from his own goal line. And now Chapman scrambling. He'll slide near the 13-yard line as we look at the Aztec offense. Well, keep your eye tonight on Dominic Guadino. He's going to be starting at the center position because Keith Ishmael sliding over to the right guard position. Carter, you mentioned it. This offensive line is critical if San Diego State's going to be successful not only tonight, but throughout the rest of this season. This group has to win up front, and Dominic Guadino is going to lead the charge. So they're without Antonio Rosales, the captain and only returning starter from last year. Second game that Rosales has missed. Straight ahead, Penny first carry from scrimmage as he takes it across the 15-yard line. Madsen on the stop as we look at the much improved Fresno State defense. This may be the most improved side of the ball in the Mountain West Conference, and it's led by Jeffrey Allison, the middle linebacker. He's a big physical box linebacker, 250 pounds, leads a team in tackles, but he can run sideline to sideline. Keep your eye on number nine tonight. This could be a next-level player in the making. Opening possession for San Diego State, third and three. Toss. Penny has it. Penny fighting as the first down. Just enough as he gets to the 19. James Bailey there on the stop. Well, a much better start to the first drive of game than it was a week ago. The toss sweep. What Penny does so well is he gets himself north and south. You see already in the game defensively, Fresno State is jetting upfield. That creates some seams. Penny is patient enough, and he runs physically enough that he can run through those arm tackles as he did there. Have both Penny and Jawan Washington out there for first and ten. They will motion Washington out. Chapman on the roll, looking to Washington, incomplete. Off his hands, incomplete. So the Fresno State Bulldogs, who didn't win a game in the Mountain West Conference last year, this is that incredible turnaround for the defense you mentioned. Carter, they run to the football well. They play with good leverage. They tackle well. They cause turnovers. At least two or more turnovers in five of six of the games this year. The one exception was their game against Alabama. Jeff Tedford has to be happy with the way his unit's been playing, led by their defensive coordinator, Alondo Steinauer. Tedford, the Fresno State alum, after his head coaching tenure at Cal, time in the NFL, CFL. Penny on the outside. Penny breaks a tackle up the sideline. Rashad Penny finally steps out of the 40. Bryant shoves him out after a gain of 22. 
Controlling the line of scrimmage is of the utmost importance. This is a good start for them. This is a delay draw lead, giving Penny the football in the backfield. You see him running through tackles already. Fresno State did an excellent job a week ago against New Mexico because they tackled well. That was not an example there. Penny's got to be good and feeling good after a pretty quick start for him. He gets a break. Washington a tailback behind Bodden. A drive that started at their own eight. Washington takes the toss on first and ten, falls forward. Helmuth there on the stop. Fresno State last week held New Mexico to 109 rushing yards, fewest in five years by the Lobos. And that spread option team among the best in the country, that's less than three yards per carry. They had no answer for what Fresno State was doing defensively. You see already the Aztecs are switching in the backs now. Jawan Washington, 29 in the backfield. He's got a little different skill set, but just as effective. Chapman, quick hitter to the outside. That's complete on the edge. It's Parker Houston who makes the grab. Bryant and Helmuth combine on the stop, setting up third and short. What I love about Christian Chapman is his ability to deliver the football on time and with accuracy. That was a little bit high, but a great move there and another broken tackle making up a very third manageable third down situation here at good field. And his drive started when Penny decided to bring it out of the end zone was dropped at the eight. Wasn't a good decision. I didn't think at all. Now third and two. Penny on the right side. Enough for the first down. Rolling over Bulldog defenders as Rashad Penny takes it to the 42. It's a gain of nine for Penny. This is just a stretch zone to the right. Remember, a couple new offensive linemen. Penny is patient. He hits the backside crease. That offensive line for San Diego State already playing better than they did a week ago. Is that last run by Penny just showed. Penny already 37 rushing yards on this drive when he was held to 53 last week by Boise State. Chabot to throw again on first and 10 to the air to the outside. Michael Holder. And that will be another first down for San Diego State. This is just what the Aztecs needed a good start tonight and they're being balanced while they're doing it the first down throws that didn't work a week ago that put them behind the chains are working beautifully here tonight the throw game is working the run game is working this is the absolute balance that offensive coordinator Jeff Horton wants for his unit Fresno State had been terrific on third down, 29% on the year. Washington takes the handoff on first and 10. Washington inside the five. First and goal, San Diego State. Washington gets up a bit gimpy after the tackle. Robert Stanley, the defensive end. Here he is right here on this side of the screen. He's going to miss the tackle on the fly sweep right there. When you don't set the edge on the defense, the entire defense breaks down. There is some pursuit there. But again, missed tackle, something that Fresno State hasn't done much of this year. I saw Nick Bodden come across there with a nice peel block back there too, number 15, the converted quarterback. 14th play of the drive is first and goal. Penny takes the toss, trying to find the corner. Penny dives with a flag down. Rashad Penny out of bounds before the goal line anyway. And now we will check the flag. Might be holding on the fullback we just complimented, number 15, Nick Bodden. More of a tackle than a block. Let's see what the officials are discussing here. Crucial penalty deep down here in the red zone after what's been a beautiful drive. Holding offense, number 15, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. Nick Bodden, the converted quarterback that we mentioned, great hustle. Been playing with a cast on his right hand. You see him running right there to the left of your screen, just wraps his arms around. You have to wonder, Carter, how much of that was the fact that he has a big ball on his right hand. He can't get his hands inside the defender as easily as he used to be able to. That was just a simple technique error that cost 10 yards for his offense. Bauden pins in his right hand put in two weeks ago. He sat out the UNLV game. Came back last week against Boise State. 
So first and goal, but now back out to the 14. Chapman to the air again, slant behind the intended receiver, Trevillian. Tank Kelly there in coverage. Tonight's red zone brought to you by Verizon. San Diego State this season only 58% touchdown percentage. That has been a sore spot for the Aztec offense. It certainly has. They're only sixth in the Mountain West in scoring touchdowns when they're down here. Neither of these offenses tonight are very good at that. They're both in the 50s, so this is going to be a big couple of plays coming up here. You want to be around 75% efficiency scoring when you're inside the 20. The 16th play of the drive is a handoff to Rashad Penny, pushing his way inside the 10. Allison makes the stop. Now Fresno State comes away with the football, but they're marking Rashad Penny down inside the 10. May have him down to the nine. Bell came out of there with the football. Ball security is so important. That ball looks like it came out. Judson Howard, our replay official, may want to take a look at this. That ball's out. After review, it was determined that the ball was loose prior to the player being down, and there was an immediate recovery by the defense. It'll be Fresno State ball, first down at the 10-yard line. Just the sixth turnover of the year by San Diego State by Rashad Penny inside the 10. So Mike Bell comes away with a football. That is Fresno State football. The Bulldogs from Fresno, California against the Aztecs from San Diego, California. And Jenny Dell is with an old friend. Well, Carter, it is the 57th meeting between Fresno State and San Diego State. And as you can see right here, they are battling for this antique oil can. Now, you might ask, why an oil can? Well, the story goes, back in the mid-30s, Fresno State fans were going down old Highway 99 to come to San Diego State. They had to carry extra oil for the long haul. The Bulldogs won. Aztec fans got angry, so they stole Fresno State's oil can, and they buried it. More on this after the play. Short gain. I'm I'm enraptured by the story of the old oil can, Jenny. Well, Carter, a few years back when they dug up the construction site to build the basketball arena at San Diego State, they found the old oil can. Now, San Diego State won it the last two years, but here it is on the sideline up for grabs tonight, guys. Jenny, no, I can say this definitively. No one tells the story of the old oil can better than Jenny Dell. It's, uh, it's becoming a tradition. So it is an old rivalry with a relatively new trophy that is called the Old Oil Can. As Jordan Mims picks up a first down for Fresno State, gain of seven, our Chick-fil-A starting lineups begin for Fresno State with the junior quarterback, Marcus McMarion, graduate transfer from Oregon State. His last two starts for the Beavers, he beat Arizona and Oregon. His first three starts with Fresno State, he has won them all against Mountain West Conference competition. And Marcus McMarion is one of the big reasons why the Bulldogs are 3-0 in conference play. First pass to the outside, Damari Scott. But Keyshawn Johnson blocking on the edge. Tariq Thompson makes the stop. Let's look at the rest of the Bulldog offense. Well, we've known about Keyshawn Johnson and Damari Scott, but a week ago, Jameer Jordan really kind of stepped up and emerged as a receiving threat, giving Fresno State three of the best receiving threats in this conference, going to make it very difficult for San Diego State to be able to double any guys up. So look for Fresno State to try and take some deep shots and stretch the field vertically against the Aztec defense. High snap, McMarion corrals it, flings complete, first down across the 50. Keyshawn Johnson makes another grab, Cameron Kelly on the stop. Well, it is Trey Lomax and Cameron Kelly, both captains of this team. After Tuesday's practice, they got the entire team together to talk about the loss to Boise State and really about moving forward from that, where their focus was, what they needed to change, and what they came up with. We just got to get back to being who it is we are, which is tough and physical and causing turnovers, Carter. No turnovers for this Aztec defense in the last two games. That's got to show up here tonight. Bulldogs cross the 50. 
for the first time. McMarion to throw again on first down. Deep ball, McMarion to the goal line. It is caught at the one. Jameer Jordan hauls it in. And the big play threat for Fresno State has another big grab. This one goes for 48 yards. Trey Lomax got caught flat-footed. You could see it right out the gate that Jordan was going to take a deep shot. On the go route, he just kept running, and Trey Lomax was flat-footed and just watched the receiver run right past him, and that ball was severely underthrown, something that you notice on film from McMarion. But the Bulldogs with a huge big play through the air, knocking on the goal line. First and goal with a second sticking away in the first quarter. Hokan takes the hand on Hokan into the end zone. Touchdown, Fresno State. So McMarion threw the air to Jordan for 48. And Josh Hokan, the former walk-on running back, into the end zone from one yard out. Good field position turns in to six points for the Bulldogs. There was some penetration there right at the snap, but Josh Hokan, a big physical runner, was able to run. Look at this play, Carter. Bulldogs are going for two. And a Jeff Tedford wacky formation. Now they will head back into more standard offensive line position. And Camacho will presumably kick the PAT with Virgil holding. So they give the Aztecs a look and then line up for the PAT. Fres no. Fres yes. Jordan 48. And then Hogan takes it in. Seven other Bulldogs. That was a solid start for San Diego State, but the Bulldogs have the 7 nothing lead with just 15 seconds left in the first quarter. And now he kicks off to two dangerous Aztec returners. It'll be Penny bringing it out again. Rashad Penny gets across the 10 this time. Rashad Penny wrapped up at the 19-yard line. Jawan Washington back out there for first and 10 with just nine seconds left in the quarter. Chapman has a deep shot. Downfield, Chapman incomplete. So they try to dial up the long one for Trevilian, who had the 89-yard touchdown last week versus Boise State. Beautiful coverage this time by Fresno State. Really nice job responding. Johnny Johnson running step for step in phase. And then Jair Bryant came over for underneath. That was really a 50-50 ball thrown up by Chapman. And I liked his location where he threw it inside trying to give Trevilian a shot, but it was defeated with really good coverage there. Washington in the backfield, he takes it on second and 10. Washington on the last play of the first quarter, brought down by Bailey and by Bryant. So San Diego State fumbles away its best chance for a score. Fresno State does not, and at the end of one, seven nothing, Bulldogs. Fresno State undefeated in Mountain West Conference play. The Aztecs 2-1, two and one, top two teams in the West. First play of the second quarter is third down for San Diego State. They're three for four on third down, but the last drive was three and out. Chapman on third and six, fling it to the outside. That's complete forward progress. Will be enough for a first down as Tim Wilson makes just the third catch of his Aztec career. Richard freshman out of Plano, Texas. What a beautiful pitch and catch though. Look at Chapman get this ball, looks the safety off, turns and fires that ball on a rope just in front of Jair and Bryant for the first down. Now what do you want to see on first down? I'd like to see a little bit more running of the football. They've gone to play action earlier and gets behind the chains. This is what I want to see. Washington, huge hole. Juwan Washington across the 50. Juwan Washington shaking his way to the 25-yard line. The Aztecs finally break a big one in the run game. 
Well, this is exactly what it is you want to do. This is a power game. This is where you pull backside linemen, get in front, get head up on that big linebacker we talked about, and just creasing the defense. And then it's beautiful open field running in that speed of Juwan Washington, who earlier in the game went into the locker room to see if he was okay. I think the answer is yes, he's just fine. Bouncing back with a 45-yard game for the sophomore, Kennedale, Texas. Now on first and ten, run it again. Right side, Washington, less room to run. Loses a yard. Let's go to our New York studio for a Century Link update. Connor and Aaron, you know Michigan blew out Penn State last year. Tonight, the Nittany Lions returned the favor. 42-13 in Happy Valley, highlighted by the juggling touchdown catch by Saquon Barkley. Guys? And a disappointing year for Michigan. Getting more disappointing in Happy Valley. And that 45 yard run was the longest of the season for Jawan Washington. It's plays like that that get you juice and mojo back. Chapman flushed again, scrambling again, manages to get back to near the 20. Jeffrey Allison makes the stop. Now you're in third down. This is more scrambling than we've seen from Christian Chapman in several games. He's not seeing what he wants to take right away. And with the middle of that defense opening up, he's been able to exploit it and pick up some positive yards. But after that long run, this is a third and medium that they've got to be able to convert. Look for their tight ends here. David Wells is a big physical inline blocker, but he's also a nice receiving threat at the tight end position. Almost doubling what they did in the first half last week against the Broncos, but still a zero on the scoreboard for San Diego State. Chapman third and seven takes off again. Popped again, minimal gain on third down. And the question marks around that Aztec offensive line are showing up as Chapman's pressured again. Yeah, they only bring three this time, so they're dropping eight, which is why Chapman can't throw the football. There's nowhere to go, so he's trying to make something out of nothing. And there's Jeffrey Allison, the big middle linebacker who stayed home and forces a field goal. Both of these teams have very strong kicking games, among the best field goal kickers in the Mountain West Conference for each of them. This will be a 37-yard attempt for John Barron, 10 for 12 on the year. Michael Holder, the holder, and the 37-yarder is good. So San Diego State is finally on the board. It's Juwan Washington who sets it up with a 45-yard rush. 7-3 ball game. You go back to the 20s with Fresno State in San Diego State. In recent years, you saw some looks of Derek Carr there and those Bulldogs team that were so good. But in 56 meetings prior to tonight, and then you factor in this game so far, a total point differential of seven points. That's how close it's been. And to see that know that the winner has advanced the Mountain West Conference Championship game each of the last four seasons. San Diego State's won it the last two years. So. You know, there's a trophy on the line and your goals of winning the West and winning the Mountain West. Big time factor in. Touchback. Fresno State will get it at the 25-yard line. McMarion four for five passing for 61 yards, including the 48-yarder to Jordan that set up the touchdown. The junior from the U of a California, the Raisin City. And when Oregon State decided that he wouldn't be the starting quarterback, he made a very quick decision to come to Fresno State. That was in August, and it has paid immediate dividends for the Bulldogs. Impressive how he's picked this offense up so quickly. Like Marion hands, that's Jordan Mims, the true freshman, with some wiggle for a gain of nine on first down. Tariq Thompson makes the stop as the Bulldogs get back to the run game. This is just a good job of zone blocking. San Diego State stunts themselves out, meaning the defensive linemen crisscross and switch gaps. And Fresno State does a nice job of finding the holes in the gaps. After the nine yard game by Mims, why not give it to him again? And he has just enough to move the chains for a first down. The true freshman from East Palo Alto, California. And again, from Ronnie Rivers, the other true freshman has been their leading rusher out. More of Mims and Hoka to add the touchdown. Been impressed by this Fresno State offensive line. They're a big, beefy group up front, talking with former Bulldog head coach Pat Hill earlier, and we were talking some old line talk, and we both have been very impressed by what this unit up front has put on tape. I'm not surprised that they're not 
trying to gas the ball here because they're pretty dang good at it up front. McMarion fakes it to the air again. Another deep shot complete again. Damari Scott this time to near the 25 with a true freshman Tariq Thompson in coverage. That's a gain of 29. Nice job that time of McMarion finding the open receiver. It looked like it was a double move there. Keep your eye on the top of the screen. Throttles down yet. It ends up turning into almost a wheel route. Thompson ended up squatting on that and another big play through the air. Five of six now for McMarion. Make it six of seven now for McMarion as Keyshawn Johnson makes the grab and shakes his way around Trey Lomax for another nice gain on first down. Man, watching McMarion this year, he's a really fast starter a week ago. In the first half, he was 10 of 13, 216 yards, two touchdowns and 50 rush yards against New Mexico. This kid starts hot all season long, and he's doing so again here tonight. And graduated with two years of eligibility. So not only giving the Bulldogs a spike in 2017, undefeated as the starter, and the turnaround for the Bulldogs, a year of eligibility left. Poke it on second and six. And he's brought down to 25. Now, Jeff Tedford, a Fresno State alum, has, has been known as an offensive innovator and a quarterback guru and a guy who can get things rolling. And the numbers bear it out big time. This team is improved on both sides of the ball. Taking a look at the offense here, the rush yards, that ground game, that physicality, and the added dynamic of the mobility of Marcus McMarion really has opened this offense up. I've been impressed with how well they've turned around. When I found out that they were 3 0 in conference, turned the tape on, it's not a fluke. Hulkett takes it on third and two. Has a first down and more. Hulkett inside the 10. Touchdown, Josh Hulkett. The former walk-on has his second rushing touchdown of the night. And Fresno State leads it 13 to three. Carter, we're talking about that offensive line for Fresno State up front. Keep your eye here with the chip block going off tackle between the right tackle and tight end. Just a beautiful job on that right side by David Patterson, the right tackle, to create the running room that Hokett needed to hit his head on the goalpost. Camacho's PAT is good. So the Bulldogs have come to San Diego, and just like Boise State did a week ago, they are pushing around the Aztecs. Hokett, touchdown again. Bulldogs in command in Aztec land. So now here is San Diego State down 14-3. Behind the chains has been a theme in the last two weeks for Rocky Long and the Aztecs. And that is a perfect example. 35 to 3 in the first half. A team that's used to playing with the lead and putting that kind of pressure on its opponents is now feeling the pressure. Touchback, San Diego State has it at the 25. Field goal drive last time. Christian Chapman and the Aztec offense had it. Busted Chapman play. trips coming away and he is sacked again. It's Robert Stanley who gets the sack. There's Mr. Stanley. Well, another big play for the Bulldog D. He kept himself alive. This was a busted play from the beginning. Christian Chapman bobbled the football, and like a good defensive end is supposed to do, he stayed home, set the edge, and got himself on the scorecard once again. A loss of seven on the second sack by the Bulldog D. He just mentioned lost yardage plays and playing from behind the chains, and here they are once again and backed up. So Chapman forced to throw into pressure. Screen. Penny on the edge. Penny across the 25-yard line. Rashad Penny takes it to the 27. Jeffrey Allison finishes it off to force third down. I got to tell you, man, that's what makes Rashad Penny so good. He turns something out of nothing. If you block three yards, he gets you seven, eight yards. As ugly as that was, they now have a third and makeable situation, albeit long, because of the athleticism of number 20. That's a deceiving number that the Aztecs four for six on third down. But remember the fumble on their opening possession near the goal line. Now on third and eight, 
Chapman. Pressured sacked again. This time it's Nathan Madsen. The third sack by the Bulldog defense. Chapman, who was sacked five times in the loss last week, already sacked three times in the first half by Fresno State. Well, Fresno State saw the tape. This is exactly what Boise State did. We opened the show talking about the stunts in the games, and this is just inexperience on that offensive line, not knowing how to pace up, pick up, fundamental stunting or crisscrossing a defensive lineman, and it's another three and out for the Aztecs. Deshaun Johnson, fair catch, grabs it at the 36-yard line. So the Aztecs in a hole, 14 to three. Chapman getting beat up by Madsen and the big Bulldogs. Fresno State in command, 14-3. Midway through the second quarter here on a San Diego State team who was undefeated until they lost to Boise State last week. Let's check in with Jenny Dell. Well, Carter, with a heavy heart, I would like to report that San Diego State lost its number one fan. On Monday, Tom Abels passed away at the age of 91. After serving in World War II, he enrolled in San Diego State in 1946, and it was then when he began attending football games as a sports editor of the school newspaper. He never stopped. Last Saturday night marked his 788th Aztec game. Rocky Long called Abel's as good a fan as there ever was. And guys, the Aztecs are wearing TA de decals on their helmet, and the stadium held a moment of applause for Tom. Yeah, I like that, Jenny. That, that was pretty fun. They said rather than a moment of silence, let's do what Tom would have done. Cheer loudly for the Aztecs. And we got to got to meet Tom Abel's through the years. I mean, just absolutely incredible and unwavering, and he was here last weekend. And by the looks of that, he's here tonight and will be for many years to come as people reflect on the memory of what's been the best fan in this program's history. Fresno State with more room to run. Jordan Mims to the 41-yard line. The Bulldogs have scored touchdowns on their last two possessions and they are rolling again plus territory at the Aztec 41 at that time it was 39 Ron Lee Laka Laka that missed the tackle in the hole we talked about it a couple series ago why isn't Fresno State getting back to running the football in between the tackles well since they've done that they're finding a lot of room to run inside now it's San Diego State that needs to be a little bit more physical because their last two drives have resulted in touchdowns McMarion to Mims, another hole on the right side for Jordan Mims. And lock a lock it there on the stop. When you're an offensive line that can come off the football shoulder to shoulder, hip to hip, good pad level, accelerating your feet on contact. And what it looks like Fresno State is doing is just running the ball straight ahead, which picks up all the trash of the 3-3-5 defense that likes to crisscross. When you stay square and keep your head up, it gives you a chance to be able to come off those combination blocks. They're doing a remarkable job in gassing the Aztecs inside as a result. Hokit in the backfield on second and seven. Hokit, more room to run. How about Josh Hokit, the sophomore? He was going to go to Drexel to be a wrestler like his older brother Isaiah. From Clovis, decided at the last minute to stay home in the San Joaquin Valley and walk on for Fresno State. And now as a sophomore, he finds himself a critical part of Bulldog football's resurgence, including two touchdowns tonight. Already 40 rushing yards for Josh Hokett to go with those two touchdowns. Not bad for a kid that was a quarterback in high school. Mm. McMarion pressured hit as he throws on first down. First time that the Aztecs have really gotten to McMarion. It's Jay Henderson, the senior linebacker, who puts the hit on the quarterback. Nice job off that right side of the offensive line. Just Jay Henderson just beating the right tackle. David Patterson, who we highlighted earlier, doing a nice job in the run game. Looked like Henderson had some pretty good get off and just did a dip and rip and made his way around for I think what was the first hit on McMarion all night long mm -hmm. and the first incompletion since the opening drive for Marcus McMarion. Handing off Hokett straight ahead dives to the 26 yard line to bring up third down Parker Baldwin on the stop. 
Really nice job that time by the left side of that offensive line, the left guard, the Tani Muti. He's a big physical guy throwing people around. Did a nice job with Deshaun Hand in the Alabama game one on one. He's a big physical player. I think has a chance to play on the next level. McMarion to the end zone incomplete. Put up there where Keyshawn Johnson had a chance to make a remarkable catch like he did last week against New Mexico. But now you get the field goal attempt. Yeah, that was just a smash route concept and really well defended that time by San Diego State. They didn't bite on it at all. But we talked about the Aztecs salvaging this drive. Fresno State helped them with the first penalty of their game only two a week ago. But this one appears costly as they attempt the field goal here. Jimmy Camacho from 38 easily good. So it's a third straight scoring drive for Fresno State. San Diego State opened up with a 16 play drive that resulted in a fumble by Rashad Penny. Since then the Bulldogs have controlled it. 17 to 3 Fresno State on San Diego State halftime here in San Diego college football on the 24 hour home of CBS Sports. Welcome back to what used to be the Murph, then it was the Q, now it's SDCCU Stadium. And Fresno State is represented very well tonight in San Diego. Jenny Dell on the sideline, Aaron Taylor, Carter Blackburn, a first half dominated by the Bulldogs. The Bulldogs, they did it on both sides of the football, and we were all expecting San Diego State to kind of show up after that lackluster performance against Boise, and they simply haven't. They got to pull it together here in the second half if they want to win. I think the Aztecs need to make a play defensively. They haven't had a turnover in the last two games that would be a great way to start this second half and begin a comeback if they can muster one since San Diego State had 83 yards on its opening drive just 72 cents Bulldogs will have it at the 25 after the touchback let's check in with Jenny well, Carter, Coach Long very simply said, we need to play better. This is exactly what happened last week. We need to keep them out of the end zone. Most of our problems are at the line of scrimmage. Coach Tedford told me they need to keep doing what they're doing, taking it one play at a time. The focus is to keep moving the ball. And, guys, Fresno tight end Jared Rice, who needed help off the field in the second quarter. Trainers were looking at his left ankle. He will not return. Big loss for Fresno State. And the Bulldogs have it to begin. Jeff Tedford in his first season coaching his alma mater, Fresno State. Rocky Long saying that their problems were along the offensive line. They've also had some problems at safety tonight as well. Expect Fresno State to ch chest those guys again, take some more deep shots. Marcus McMarion hands off on first down across the 30 for Jordan Mims. And for San Diego State, the the first half the last two weeks against the Broncos of Boise State now the Bulldogs of Fresno State both not good no when you're punting the football away and giving it away by putting it on the ground you're not going to do what you need to do offensively and that puts your defense in a bind because they're on the field a lot and that's really what happened a week ago against Boise State because the Aztecs played pretty well through two and a half quarters but in the middle of the third quarter they were just worn out and Boise was able to run the ball on them. Bulldogs have only thrown it one time in the half. And now, here's the play action. Here's the shot. Complete across the 50. Damari Scott hauls it in in front of Cameron Kelly. This is that downfield pass, a 24-yard shot. Their fourth tw play of 20 or more yards. Just does a nice job with the clear out. And then finally, Cameron Kelly reacts late to be able to get him down on the ground. But Rocky Long has made his living having really good defensive backs and good pass defense. But McMarion is throwing dimes, finding the right receiver, throwing the ball accurately and on time. And that's heavily due to the lack of any sort of pass rusher pressure. Hokett takes it on first down. Slipping away from the first tackler. Hokett barreling over Cameron Kelly near another first down. And the Bulldogs are doing some talking after that run by Hokett because they are earning it. Yeah, they certainly earn it. It's a beautiful run by Hokett. Just running through the arms of the defender. Bounces outside. Takes his fate to his own hands. And finds a way to pick up nine yards. And now some more for Hokett. This time on the right side. 
Moving to the 31. Another first down. Sergio Phillips finally makes the stop. This is just power football by Fresno State. It's so pretty to watch. They're blowing guys off the line of scrimmage. San Diego State, a lot of guys with their hands on their hips. This is very reminiscent of what we saw in the second half a week ago against Boise State. Look at 16 yards on the last two carries. Already has two rushing touchdowns. Gets a break here. Jordan Mims in the backfield. High snap. Mims takes it. Left side. This time he is popped as Cameron Kelly delivers the blow to Mims. Nice job by Cam Kelly coming up and almost forcing a negative play. I don't know if San Diego State has a tackle behind the line of scrimmage tonight, but you want to talk about Rashad Penny being one of the best running backs in the country. He's getting outplayed by Jordan Mims and Josh Hokett tonight, who each are having an outstanding performance in their own way. Running behind the solid offensive line for Fresno State. Now it's O'Neal in the backfield with Hokett. Eighth play of the Bulldog drive after they went three and out. That one's fling to the outside. O'Neal on a backwards pass. O'Neal falls forward across the 25. Flag down. Laka Laka makes the tackle. Personal foul. Walk below the waist. Wide receiver Damari Scott called for the block below the waist. I think it's Damari Scott here on the hash right here is going to run up and cut the illegal chop block there. He went back in towards the football, which makes that block illegal. Back in the Bulldogs in the third and 20. McMarion pressured just has to release it incomplete and so what was a promising Fresno State drive turns into fourth down but McMarion for now oh, thank you third and 20 coming yes and McMarion one of the only times he's been pressured tonight very smartly put that ball in the dirt but you're right Carter is the penalty that puts them behind the chains here and this is really a chance for San Diego State to pin its ears back Get some pressure and try and force Fresno State into a mistake. Usually the offense does stay on the field for third down. That's what, when I played football, that's what happens. I get confused on the down sometimes <laughs> too, partner. On third and 20, McMarion complete. That's O'Neal underneath, shaking away. O'Neal popped, and he dives forward to the 25. So on third and 20, you've set yourself up in pretty good position for fourth down, and... Here comes the kicking unit. No, I think this conservative move is the right one considering how well your defense is playing. You love that you picked up a big chunk of that yardage back because it significantly shortens the distance for the field goal. But the field goal is the right call here, especially when you've got a pretty good field goal kicker. This from 43, Camacho's hit from 50 already this year. So the 43-yarder from Jimmy Camacho is good and Fresno State has the first points of the second half Jeff Tedford's team in command with the old oil can on the line the Bulldogs from the Valley of San Joaquin 20 to 3 our producer Jason Ross director Matt Plundo entire CBS crew here from late night in San Diego California Aztecs needing a burst. Rashad Penny is dropped inside the 10 again. That's exactly how the first drive started for San Diego State inside their own 10. 
So Washington in the backfield takes it on the right side. Bulldogs in the backfield again. Nothing there for Washington on first down. Their first down production all night long has been not very good. And you have to credit Fresno State that defensively is winning at the line of scrimmage. And Jeffrey Allison, who we talked about at the beginning of this game during the lineups, is having a heck of a game himself. Tackle for loss, eight tackles, and a forced fumble. He's been all over the field tonight. Chapman hands off. Short gain. Let's check with Jenny. Yeah, Cameron Kelly, who Rocky Long said is the voice of this defense, just walked up and down the bench yelling at the guys saying, get up, get up. When the offense is on the field, we're standing up. This is a team effort. Guys, he's really trying to get the energy going down here. And, Jenny, that's a, a great point because the characteristic of this Aztec team is they haven't had a whole lot of that vocal leadership this year. And when you don't have that, it's times like this that you need that leadership to emerge. And sometimes it's just lip service. But you need something to get a spark. Rocky Long in our meetings yesterday. Yesterday talked about the psychological advantage or disadvantage and the important role that that plays on the team and it just hadn't been there tonight. Chapman deep shot on third and six looking for Trevelyan it's knocked away heck of a play by Bryant got two hands on the football but breaks up the deep shot from Chapman to Trevelyan Jaron Bryant. Make that four straight, three and outs. Kristen Chapman's got a good, not a great arm. A lot of air underneath this ball that kind of dies on Trevelyan, so he has to wait on it. And that's just enough to allow Jaron Bryant to come over and almost intercept that football. Might end up with better field possession, field position. Not making the grab. I mean, there's a fair catch call for by Johnson right at the 48 yard line, so. Another chance for the Bulldogs to pad a 17-point lead. All Bulldogs thus far. The Aztecs ran 16 plays on their first drive, only 22 cents. So as we look at our Geico difference makers, well, the difference really was Rashad Penny fumbling at the end of that opening drive. But give a big tip of your cap to the Fresno State Bulldogs and what they have done all over the field, including Josh Hokett running behind that offensive line. Yeah, with Ronnie Rivers out, he's kind of been the go-to guy, and he's running with authority and physicality behind his pads, as we say in the football world. It's just being physical, but it's really all thanks in part to a Fresno State offensive line that is playing with determination, with toughness, with physicality, and together. They truly are a unit in the finest sense of the word, and Josh Hokett has been the beneficiary tonight. Representing the V, Fresno State wears proudly for the agriculturally rich San Joaquin Valley. Tough blue-collar people, man. He wears it well. Fresno State is back to playing that way. And this is Hokett across the 50. So San Diego State had 12 takeaways in the first five games of the year. They won them all, including the wins over Stanford and at Arizona State. But no takeaways the last two weeks, including the loss against Boise State. And they don't have a takeaway so far in this game and the Aztecs need something to change the momentum in the worst way. These are the two time defending Mountain West Conference champs and the reason they became that way is because they could run the football and steal possessions and those are the two things that they haven't been able to do these last two weeks. McMarion deep shot Johnson holds it in Keyshawn Johnson over Cameron Kelly. He's a big physical playmaking receiver one on one coverage Cameron Kelly running stride for stride but a little late push off a very savvy move that time by Keyshawn Johnson gives him just the amount of separation he needs to catch the beautiful pass by Marcus McMarion. What a beautiful deep ball he throws mm, 33 yards on that one so 47 receiving yards for Johnson after he had his third 100 yard receiving game last week against the Lobos. Mems on first and ten. Mems will take it to the ten. As we look at our red zone tonight, brought to you by Verizon and Fresno State, you go on two trips, two touchdowns. That's going to improve those numbers that the Bulldogs needed to improve. They were 54% touchdown so far. 
Touchdowns are so important aside from a touchdown being worth four more points and a field goal. It takes three field goals to defeat every touchdown if you will. So what you do inside the 20 is significant and Fresno State has been on point offensively tonight really on both sides of the ball with the turnover they caused on the first drive of the game. Mims with the play clock winding down takes the handoff and another good push of the pile. I mean with his offensive line shoving him across the 10 yard line across the five for another first down. So it's first and goal Bulldogs. That left side of the offensive line Christian Kronk Tani Muti keep an eye on those guys just great push covering up the defenders the leg drive it's the acceleration on contact in the finish Carter there are three phases to an offensive lineman's block the beginning the contact power the sustain in the middle and the finish at the end that last play had all three for Fresno State's offensive line and when you can do that you're doing work up front. On first and goal, Hokan behind the left side again into the end zone. Touchdown, Josh Hokan. The sophomore from Clovis has his third rushing touchdown of the night. And he immediately heads to that offensive line and says, thanks for blocking the way for me all night, fellas. You got a physical back running behind a physical offensive line. Two hands around the ball in the contact zone running behind his pads. The six foot one, 220 pound sophomore out of Clovis getting it done running behind that big offensive line. Impressive. Camacho's PAT makes it 27 to 3. The Bulldogs have brought the muscle. Who let him out? State desperately needs something to jumpstart this team on both sides of the football because right now pretty much since we kicked it's been Fresno State with its foot all over the throat of the Aztecs like a langoustine and a shellfish allergy all through right here that's right Parker Houston hops on top of it this offensive line that is so young been banged up Move some people around. Dominic Godino started the game at center. Keith Ishmael, the center, went over to the right guard position to take over for Antonio Rosales, who's been battling an ankle injury. Just not the right mix to find the room necessary to be productive. And now Chapman does have some room to run after he's plus from the pocket. Ends up getting three yards. Haynes finally finishes it off. And once again, credit that coverage on the back end by Fresno State defensively. They only bring four, they drop seven, but he has nowhere to go. So he smartly tucks the ball and tries to make something out of nothing. Picks up three yards. But hey, they got three yards on first down. That's better than <laughs> what they've done a lot of snaps tonight. Four penalties against San Diego State, all costly. Chapman over the middle, that's complete. Nick Bodden is upended as soon as he grabs it by Jeffrey Allison with the seconds ticking away in the third quarter in a game that has absolutely been dominated by the Bulldogs who are determined to take that old oil can back with them to Fresno. Third down, seven yards to go, San Diego State in the 38. I don't think I would trust the oil that's actually in the can, though. Chapman third and seven. That's tipped. Still complete. Holder holds it in. That's enough for a first down. And a ray of sunshine, an otherwise gloomy performance by San Diego State. Finally, another first down for San Diego State. But we go to the fourth with the Bulldogs in command. 27 to 3, all Fresno State headed to the four. Fresno State in command here in San Diego as we began the fourth quarter. 27 to 3, Bulldogs. First and 10 for San Diego State. Chapman's under center. Chapman. 
Flush from the pocket again. Chapman is dropped and sacked again. This time it's Stephen Van Hook who drops Christian Chapman. Once again, nowhere for Chapman to be able to throw the football. It was decent protection initially. He pulls the ball down, and Hook just retraces his steps over the right tackle, Ryan Pope. And Chapman falls right into his arms. Second sack of the year for Van Hook. Stanley and Madsen both had their first sacks of the year on Christian Chapman in the first half. Play fake. Chapman, here's a deep shot again, and it's incomplete. This is incomplete. Overshooting Isaiah this is Macklin with Tank Kelly there in coverage. Third and four, and what is a silent homecoming crowd at this point. Yeah, they switched out personnel here. They're going to go to kind of their bigger personnel, a couple tight ends. Nick Bodden's back on the field. Expect some sort of lead ISO here or play action. Getting Chapman out on the edge as well. Malik Forrester's night's not done. He's back out there for third and four. Chapman zips it incomplete. Fourth down coming. Almost think San Diego State has to go for it here on fourth down to give themselves a chance. It's near midfield. It's a very makeable fourth down situation. And that's exactly what they're going to do. They're taking their sweet old time, though. Only one fourth down conversion allowed this year by Fresno State. Teams are just one for nine in fourth down against the Bulldogs. San Diego hadn't been very successful either. Only 33% conversions on fourth. And it was Alabama who had that fourth down conversion. And now Chapman on fourth and four to the outside caught. Fourth down conversion. Tim Wilson makes the catch at midfield to move the sticks. Wilson's had a couple nice catches that have extended drives. Notice Chapman's balls are all been pretty high tonight. When he misses, he seems to miss high. The receivers are having to go up and get them. He's usually quite a bit more of an accurate passer. The pass before that was a little off target. But give him credit, he hit 93 in the hands and they moved the chains, picking up a nice fourth down here to keep this drive alive. And now to throw again on first down, another deep shot. It is off the hands and incomplete. Michael Holder had it inside the 10. Certainly did. I think he also had tight end Kahale Waring. That was open as well on a seam route. Running down the hash right there. Waring's right open if he puts it on him. But that's a ball that Michael Holder has to catch. It's a beautiful pass by Chapman. You've got to make that, but that's the second week in a row we've seen a receiver drop a catchable ball for a touchdown by San Diego State when they desperately needed it. Would have been Holder's first touchdown of the year. Here's a toss. Penny on the left side. Dino four. The longest pass play of the game for San Diego State is 11 yards. That's not going to give you room to run either. No perdoodles. So this becomes four down territory for the rest of the game at this point. You went for it on the minus side of the 50. Now that you're on the plus side, I don't know if Jeff Horton has taken that into consideration where he's got to call two plays, but this is a third medium that if they don't get here, they'll probably run another play to try and convert. Flag down. Chapman sacked again. This time it's Indo who has the sack. We'll check the flag, though. Illegal shift. Offense, number 15 and number 8. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. Bodden and Truxton. Probably both moving at the same time. And the fourth sack of the day by the Bulldog defense. That is nine sacks allowed in the last two weeks by San Diego State. Going for it on fourth and 14. Chapman pressured. Chapman on the roll. Chapman 
It is tipped and incomplete. And the Bulldogs take over with a chance to run out the clock. And that's going to be a turnover on downs with 521 remaining. Mm. A lackluster evening for the Aztecs. 521 to go in the ball game. The Gasland District here in San Diego, we can recommend Cafe 222 is a very good breakfast spot. Delicious coffee. We spent the last two weeks in San Diego. I haven't seen the Aztecs play very good football. Last two weeks, Marcus McMarion and the Bulldogs take over. It is Mims getting the first down carry as we take a look at the Mountain West Conference standings. Fresno State about to go to 4 and 0 after they didn't win a game in the Mountain West last year, where San Diego State will fall to 2 and 2. Well, when I take a look at that graphic there, I don't see anybody else on that side of the division that poses a real threat to Fresno State. They remind me a lot of Colorado State, the way they can throw it around but also be physical at the point of attack. This is a very much improved football team, but I think they keep this up is without a doubt going to represent the West in the conference championship game. Like Marion to Mims again. Sergio Phillips there on stop third and short coming up. This is an offensive lineman's favorite part of the game. It's the four minute offense where two minute you try to score as quickly as you can in under two minutes. This is a situation where you try to bleed the clock for as long as you can. It's third and two a little over four minutes left. If you can stay on the field and bleed the clock out in the obvious run situation, the defense can't do anything about it. There's nothing more gratifying for a unit up front than that. On third and two, McMarion on the roll. Fires incomplete. On third and two, looking to throw it, so the clock stops at 346 with Noble Hall putting some pressure. Coaching point from Ted for there with McMarion. Galen DeBoer has called an excellent game tonight. I don't know what the heck that last <laughs> play was. Come on, man. Don't get too cute. Get your two yards. Your offensive line has been doing a great job. It's a conservative, safe play, and maybe a smart changeup. But damn, let the big dudes up front do their job. Usyk hits it near midfield. There's a flag down. The ball will hit at the five and trickle into the end zone. We check the flag. Illegal formation on the kicking team. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage. That five-yard penalty will be added to the end of the kick. First down. Timeout. 27 to three, Bulldogs. Well, the San Diego State Band performed well tonight. <laughs> Fresno State continuing one of college football's best turnarounds. Uh, Virginia lost today, but Marshall, Michigan State, and Fresno State are all winning. So from 1 and 11 to 4 and 2, and you're going to go to 5 and 2. And worth repeating, the only two losses, Washington and Alabama, and they didn't get dominated in either one of those. So you, you have. Really seven good results. The San Diego State's made a change with Ryan Agnew in at quarterback. And gone to the twos on offense. Agnew draw. That's a better place for the Aztecs tonight. It's nice to have some wheels at the quarterback position and to get some good reps. I mean, San Diego State essentially waving the white flag, but. The story really is about Fresno State and what it is they've done. And I think those the way that they showed up and played, even though they lost that those games to Alabama and Washington, they held their own and they were able to look at the film against some of the country's finest and best recruited athletes. And I think that gave oh. them some confidence. A little early jump on the snap there. And I'm surprised we didn't see any flags thrown there. Instead, Bobble Snap Agnew gets on top of it. So 
Chapman's night is done. He was sacked four more times tonight. And that's officially a sack there on Agnew, so his fifth, 10 for 20, 77 yards. And after starting his Aztec career, 19 and three, and will have lost his last two starts. San Diego State's had 178 yards of offense tonight. They have yet to eclipse. Oh, and another fumble. Jasmine gets back on top of it. And 82 of those came on the opening possession. Yep. The, the very first, that's like when you start the game mm -hmm. at the front. Hey, another Fresno State alumni news. Lane Kiffin and Florida Atlantic with a Conference USA record 800 four yards in a 69 31 win over North Texas. Also Aaron Judge had a great catch tonight for the Yankees. He's a Fresno State alum but they did not win. Agnew gets the first down. Tough run for Ryan Agnew. Sophomore from South Lake Carroll High School. So there's your full Fresno State alumni update. Tedford gets a win. Judge makes a catch. Lane Kiffin and FAU big one. Lead quarterback draw, Agnew taking the ball, showing some wheels, but right here got a little bit of power, not giving up, and falling forward, running behind his pads. The Fresno State has all their backups in on defense, so this is twos against twos, basically. Chapman to the outside to Wilson. So for Fresno State, I mean, you have done this 3-0, and you're going to be 4-0 and in conference. And then UNLV at home, that BYU is non-conference. At Hawaii, at Wyoming, Boise State, on CBS Sports Network Thanksgiving week. That's a big one. That and last one's the one that could probably give them the most trouble. I was going to say, you look at the last two, Wyoming and Boise State. And the Bulldogs uh, are, are going to roll with a head of steam at 4-0 atop the Mountain West Conference West Division. And the turnaround continues, and the sizable Fresno State contingent holding their heads high, and soon they will be holding the old oil can high. Jeff Tedford's first game in the old oil can rivalry. Agnew to the air on second and seven. Bulldogs and Aztecs playing it out to the end. And now for San Diego State, you lose back-to-back -back home games, and the next two are on the road at Hawaii at San Jose State. Never easy to play on the road at Hawaii across the pond. Nevada does a nice job with lost yardage plays. They lead the Mountain West Conference in tackles for loss. And New Mexico with that triple option is always a question mark. San Diego State's bowl eligible at this point. They've got a lot of work to do on both sides of the ball, in my opinion, to finish this year strongly. After a 6-0 start, the Aztecs will have lost back-to-back -back games, both of them at home. And Fresno State prepares to celebrate and to take back the old oil can. They'll take it back with them up to Fresno, California, into the valley. And one of college football's biggest turnarounds continues. They'll go to 5-2, and 4-0 and oh in the Mountain West. And a dominant defensive performance again for the Fresno State Bulldogs. After shutting out New Mexico, they hold San Diego State to only three points. One more snap. Agnew going to take the shot to the end zone. It is knocked away, and now it is in the books. 27-3, Fresno State dominates San Diego State, and the Bulldogs rush to the Aztec sideline to grab the old oil can. It's headed back to Fresno, California. The Bulldogs are 4-0 in Mountain West Conference play. Let's go. Let's go. 
The 57th meeting between Fresno State and San Diego State is all Bulldogs. And Jeff Tedford with a thumbs up to the Fresno State fans who made it to San Diego. And they have a lot to celebrate. Another dominant performance by the Bulldog defense. Best since 2013. And the Derek Carr, Devontae Adams Bulldog teams. And so with the old oil can held high, enough fuel to get back to the San Joaquin Valley. San Diego State after the 6-0 start, balls to 6-2 with back-to-back -back home losses to Boise State. Fresno State, here's Jenny. Coach, you're now 4-0 in conference play. Do you feel like this team's clicking on all cylinders? Well, we're playing as a team for sure. We've got a lot of guys that practice hard and play really, really hard. So I'm really happy for our team and our coaches who just, they do a great job of preparation. As a Fresno alum, you know this in-state rivalry is a big deal. 57 years in the making. What does it mean to have the oil can back at Fresno? Oh, it's great. You know, it's that's icing on the cake to get that, but the victory is a huge deal for these kids and for our program. Congratulations on the victory, Coach. Thanks very much. So for our producer, Jason Ross, director Matt Plundo, Aaron Taylor, Jenny Dell, our entire crew, I'm Carter Blackburn. Now we send you to Brent Stover, Christian Fourier for Inside College Football.